some of you may uh, wonder in sitting in the audience, uh, I mean, this is a workshop dedicated to synchrotron imaging at the end. So why are we talking about all these other imaging uh, modalities all the time? Um, I'm sure there's at least one uh, thinking that. And, uh, and, I, I, and the reason for that is to, if, I mean, at the end, we want med max at max four. And we, we have to find arguments for that. And uh, one argument, I guess, is to engage with different pharmaceutical companies to promote the uh, funding of MedMax. And to do that, we have to offer them something they don't really, they don't already have. So that is kind of why we're having this uh, stop of, of the workshop and the, the working group. To, to make the common knowledge of, of what they actually already have and which they don't want to pay extra money for. And uh, you see, I pressed the button. <laughs> <laughs> so we're make, making progress in many respects here. Um, so, so this graph again, uh, as Leif pointed out, uh, there is many imaging activities going on in the pharmaceutical company. They have their own equipment. They can set up their studies as they do. They have very skilled personnel to do the imaging. So uh, <coughs> from the synchrotron, we need to do something quite different. And in order to know what is quite different, it's my duty to, to, to learn or to teach, you can say, what we do with the, um, uh, normal, or if you can call it, the standard model, imaging modalities. And the reason why we have imaging at all in the pharmaceutical industry is because they are adding some value which other uh, methods doesn't do, like histology, for example. So one very important point is that uh, it's in vivo. And I know uh, if we talk about synchrotron imaging, obviously there's lots to do ex vivo, and once it comes to in vivo, everything gets a little bit complicated. But that is what this working group is kind of aiming for, the complicated in vivo things. Because it, you don't have to kill the animal, which can make the studies to be longitudinal. And also the imaging provides this 3D, three-dimensional data, so you get a lot of data at the same time. And if you want, uh, a good imaging modality, it should be, both be able to assess and classify disease on animals and then on patients as well, if it's uh, good. And also the treatment response, so you can see the effect of new drugs. Try new drugs, see the effect. And the translational aspects, mouse to man. <clears throat> So I'm, I'm starting with uh, the three uh, different modalities to, to kind of show this is what we can do with normal imaging equipment. So this is a, just a micro CT. And the micro CT provides contrast like x-rays, but tomographic, so you get the three dimensional uh, volume. In this case, we see just a one slice out, out of that. And obviously there is high contrast in the bone and there is high contrast in the lungs. And then there's no so, so much difference between the different soft tissues in the uh, CT image. So uh, bone is something which uh, looks very great and have the high contrast. So that can be uh, explored with micro CT. And in this particular study, they have a spatial resolution of 80. 80 micrometer, which is quite good. Um, so uh, if you want to do something better, it has to be certainly higher spatial resolution than this. And, and what they do is to uh, measure the, the torques of the mouse, and then they extract the bone. And by that, you can measure the volume of uh, both the soft tissue and the bone in this region. Now, why would you do such a thing? Because there are one disease called rheumatoid arthritis, where uh, there is growing uh, bone, 
and it's a very common disease. And maybe this is uh, the thing is you want an animal model to uh, replicate what's happening in, in humans. And that they, that they have. So uh, this is the start, and then different uh, weeks after they introduce the disease, because this is kind of typically you have when you buy animals, they are healthy. That's the point of totem. And then you have a disease model or a disease mechanism that you introduce. So first you have to make them sick in order to treat them. So here you can see that it's uh, going worse in the, in the bone. And it is all measured by the CP level. So what is the study then? Well, you measure the volume of the bone. And you can see that for the naive mice, nothing happens. They're just healthy. In the, uh, in the sick group, uh, you get the bone uh, volume goes down. Uh, in, in the days of this disease, and then when you start the treatment, you see that there's a difference between the treated group and the untreated group. And if this was a study in, the, uh, in a pharmaceutical company, that would be a fourth, which is the new drug, which you compare then with, is that better than traditional, which is the steroid? And if you look at the literature, you can, of course, never find these studies where the fourth unknown for the drug is, because that is seldom uh, published. It's a few one, but then it's long after the, the drug is uh, being explored. So that's how you do it. And this is quite efficient with a simple micro CT, which you can have in house, which is, of course, a lot cheaper than. Uh, the uh, synchrophones. So with this uh, example, I, I, I would argue that you can do all these things from in, it's in vivo, you assess the disease, the treatment response, and you, it's obviously longitudinal. So that's the micro CT. What's the limitation then? What, what can we do a lot better? Yeah, obviously there is the spatial resolution, which in the micro meter range, that can be improved a lot with synchrotron. Uh, limitation as such is that from the CT, it's only anatomical data and not functional. Uh, and then sometimes the radiation dose is a problem. In this particular study, it was one gray, which is a lot, but it was only to the feet. So it doesn't really matter that much. But obviously, if you irradiate the whole uh, animal, like we, in studies of the lungs, you have to keep it the dose uh, uh, less than one gram. Till the 50 for mice is about four, six grams. So that's to give you a number. And then, then we have nuclear medicine. So nuclear medicine is something we do with PET cameras, inspect cameras. And, and the idea is that you have a radionuclide, could be many different ones, and that gives you the signal, the, the thing you measure. And then you have a probe which you attach on that radionuclide, and the probe decides where the radionuclide go. And then you get these images, uptake of the specific uh, probe, what, where that is going. And, uh, very common applications are, of course, uh, the glucose of 18 chlorine that goes to uh, actually any anything that, that uh, consumes energy, which tumors do, do a lot. They, they like the sugar, so you can see them. But it, it can be a lot more specific. So a probe like the amyloid that goes into the brain can be used in studies of Alzheimer's disease or uh, collagen one, which uh, Karen, did you, did you show that? No, I didn't. No, you didn't, okay. That, that goes to uh, collagen one, which can be interesting in fibrosis study. Or uh, PSMA, which is a, a prostate specific uh, membrane uh, 
probe that goes to tumors in the person. So by selecting the probe, it can be very uh, specific. And also it shows the function. What it doesn't give you is the anatomy. So you combine it with a CT in order to know where the uptake is uh, going. So one, one example I would give here that we have been uh, working with, although I will show images from, uh, uh, from a paper, is the uh, a peptides, which is specific for collagen. So which is um, uh, something which show where the lung, in this case lung, uh, fibrosis is building up. So it's instead of looking at something where the fibrosis is already there, we can look at where the fibrosis is uh, building up. But this is how that works. Um, in in the left hand graph, we uh, they, they gave the probe, but it's a healthy animal and consider no uptake in the lung. Then they have a bleomycin uh, uh, exposed animal, which uh, have inflammation and uh, fibrosis going on. And then you can see there's a great uptake. So how do you use such a model in the drug testing? Well, uh, here's one with the antibody therapy. So again, there is the bleomycin with a probe, a lot of uptake. And then they treat with antibody therapy and there is low uptake. So this is another example of you, you specific you can assess the disease. You can, uh, oh, I forgot this one. This, you can only, you can also do this in the, the human. So here's the CT, where you can see the fibrosis. Um, similarly, the uh, uptake of this compound here. So about PET then, again, PET is functional. It's not anatomical. That's uh, one of the main differences. And it also provides all this uh, map that you want to have from in vivo, non lateral uh, assess, uh, disease treatment, and so on. And what's the limitation of the nuclear medicine techniques? Uh, the radiation dose to the animals here is not really an issue, but uh, the injecting volume is an issue often because you want high uh, activity in to make images but you can't uh, inject milliliters into small uh, rodents, which is a challenge that you need a very high specific activity. Also, of course, you need the supply of radionuclides. Many of them you can buy if it's a spec, but if it's PET, you have to be close to someone who produces them. And if you want to do funny stuff like this probe for a collagen one, you need a radiochemistry. So that's a challenge. Uh, and also the spatial resolution is not that great, but since this is a functional measurement, maybe the resolution isn't a bit easy. So a uh, lot, lot of uh, good news or good facts about the nuclear medicine, but there's also certain limitations. And then we have the uh, magnetic resonance imaging which uh, always is a little bit more about the complicated one because you can do so many different things. And uh, I think they already showed a picture of a mouse heart where you can measure the ejection fraction, but uh, you can really uh, appreciate the, the soft tissue contrast you get in the abdomen of the rat here. You can distinguish the different organs that wouldn't be possible with X-ray. Or you can uh, use a technique to make angiography of a mouse brain uh, with rather high resolution. And in this particular case, you can see the mouse here going into the, the magnet. <clears throat> and then I will show some older slides here from uh, my former career, where we studied uh, inflammatory bowel disease and had a mouse model for that. So uh, this is, uh, oops. This is the colon, the, the small ring here in a healthy mouse. And this is the, the colon in a uh, mouse which has this particular disease that we introduced. 
So um, is that worth doing? Well, uh, we are competing with this. So obviously this is a dead animal because we have the colon outside and we can measure the stiffness, the edema, the bloodiness and the thickness. And that is very operator dependent. So if you want to um, say, is this animal sick or not sick? Well, it's too late because we have taken it out. <laughs> so, we, so we don't, that's, that's too late to make the study. So that's one thing we can do. We can actually, by using imaging, say that we have uh, animals with the disease in our groups, which is important. And you can also do contrast enhanced MRI. So this is now a, a coronal image of the mouse. So this is the, the colon. And you can see when we have injected contrast, it's brighter. So, okay, now the fun was over. No, it was. So, so we can actually assess different kind of inflammation in the mice with acute chronic and healthy. And what is fun or what not fun, what is good is you can do this in humans as well. So it's a link to that. So uh, summarize uh, MRI in treat clinically. Uh, it has all these uh, possibilities that we want from a, a 3D preclinical um, method. What's the limitation with the MRI? Well, there is no radiation dose, so that's not an issue. But this, the spatial resolution, it's really hard to say what it is because you can kind of decide what spatial resolution you want just by measuring longer time, other equipment, uh, special coils. Uh, but if you're not going to spend uh, too much time on each man, animal, you probably wait. It's probably in this range here. Uh, so if you want higher resolution, it's really long uh, acquisition time. Low sensitivity in the sense compared to uh, PET when it comes to uh, looking at different molecules. So ultrasound, uh, not going to say too much about that, but. Um, what differs ultrasound from many other techniques is that you all often have to tell what you're looking at for an audience that's not in depth, but this, this is a beating heart, uh, which is not, not healthy. But, but it gives you the anatomical information and it's direct functional. I mean, <coughs> cardiology can, can say how the function works when they're looking at these pictures and they can also do different kinds of measurements. It's not a technique if you want really high uh, spatial resolution. And again, it's a little bit of operator dependent. And one thing about doing animals is often that you have to shape the animal in order to get good contact with your probe. And that can affect how you set up the study because you know, they particularly don't like that. And they want to be used longitudinally. Okay. Optical uh, was shown this morning. Um, the, the real good thing about the optical is that you can design a very specific probe and put on these uh, molecules that give you a little bit sense. Uh, so that, that I would say is the, the, be the benefit of optical. Uh, the resolution can be, can be high, uh, depending on how you do your measurements. If you want to do in vivo uh, of the whole animal, the penetration of the light can also be a limitation. So, so that's uh, a drawback. So some, some, to sum up, we hope we have functional imaging. It's the PET and SPECT. They are direct functional, low resolution. MRI is indirect functional. You can measure function, but not uh, specifically. Spatial resolution is also a limitation. And we have anatomical imaging. Uh, we have this excellent soft contrast of MRI. Spatial resolution limitation. Micro CT gives you uh, anatomical imaging with very high spatial resolution, I would say. 
um, but it's also only anatomical data. So if we look on, on this graph, we have the nuclear medicine techniques here with their resolution going down to CT, which is about this range, 0 0.01 millimeter. And then we hope to have synchrotron up here. So preferably we need experiments that need high spatial resolution, I would say, or uh, something which need to be imaged very, very quick. Uh, sensitivity uh, on contrast media, obviously pet spec with their traces, it's most sensitive technique. But I, I guess you can use very many nanoparticles or whatever probe here in combination with synchrotron to make it uh, very sensitive for experiments. 